canoe this evening. In the house this evening. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was pouring down. It was, it was dark. Uh, but it's, the storm has passed. So let, it, let, it, let there be a prophetic thing that the Lord is already saying. Uh, that the storm has passed. So we're going to be tonight in the book of Psalms tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In the book of Psalms tonight, Psalms chapter 121 is where we're going to be tonight. Thank you, Lord. It's a short, short passage, but it's got a lot of meat in it. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Let's remember our sister, um, our sister Melissa Millway. We want to keep her and her family lifted up in prayer. Um, also, we want to remember Myrna as well. We'll keep her lifted up in prayer too. We're going to be this evening. This evening in Psalms 121. Thank you, God. It's going in and out. One twenty one, Psalm one twenty one. We just gonna have to work through it. I guess it's going, <laughs> we'll figure out what's going on. Psalm one twenty one. We're gonna read the whole chapter though this evening. One twenty one. Is everybody there? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from the evil, from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out, thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Father, we thank you for tonight and we thank you for the word. We thank you for the safety and the sanctity of this house that you allowed us to be in. We thank you for divine appointments, God, who, who you told to be in the house this evening from those that are connected with us online as well this evening, Lord. We thank you uh, that you minister your word, Father, in a unique and special way that we could comprehend it and, and then apply it. We thank you right now for the anointing that destroys every yoke and lifts every burden this evening. We thank you for all that are assembled here. And we thank you right now for blessing every house in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We also want to, as, as I was reading that and praying, also want to remember, let's remember Catherine Wright as well, our sister Catherine Wright, and also, which would then be her family, Tamara and Wendy. We remember uh, that family, James. We want to keep the, uh, the Wright family uh, in prayer this evening. Um, Psalms 121, uh, the, the, it says it's a song of degrees where they're, they're singing and they're positioning themselves. All the psalms were meant to be sung. Were meant to be sung as praise or as worship unto the Lord. Um, when we look at 1 through 8, 1 starts off, says, everybody say, I will. When he says, I will, that means that he's made a decision. And there comes a point in time that we're supposed to make a decision. And because we've had people make decisions on our behalf, or things around us have happened without our consent. Psalm 121, verse 1 says, I will. This was my choice, right? This was my decision, right? And so I was cognitive about it. I weighed out the options, and I thought my best option was to look towards God. Amen? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. When he says, now, when we think about, old, the movies used to say the 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 hillsides used to divide the people. So sometimes your help would come, have to come over the mountain 
to assist you. We and you see old movies they said they would say the cavalry is coming. They would see men on horseback and 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 coming over the mountain or coming over ridge to help. But when he says he's looking towards the hills from which cometh his help, this is also a picture that he's looking beyond the hills that he's seeing. That he's looking towards heaven. He's looking towards Jerusalem. If a traveler is afar off, his only his only compass is the is the mountain ridge. So when he says he looks towards the hills, if wherever Jerusalem is, Jesus is there also. Wherever Jerusalem is, Jehovah's there. And so when he said, I'm looking in that direction, my focus has got to be on God now. My focus has got to be on who, who's really helping me in this season. Because you've got to identify when you're going through who's really helping you. Who's picking up the phone? Who's shooting you a message? Who's, who's calling, checking in, see how you're doing? Because you're quick to check in on others, but how many people are really checking in on you to see how you're doing? And isn't that something how people will get upset with you for not calling? And at the same time, they're not calling you either? As if the phone don't work. Have, it's, it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. Yes? So he says, listen, I will, look, I will lift up my eyes. Another passage in Psalms, Psalms 3 and Psalms 5 says, he's the lifter of my head. Means I'm no longer depressed. Means I'm no longer having a pity party. I'm no longer, I'm no longer in a place where I'm with my head hung down about the choices that I made, about the decisions or the outcome. But rather now he's the he's the lifter of my head. He's not gonna allow me to walk around defeated. Right? He's not gonna allow me to walk around with as if to say I've been I've been beaten by the enemy. We're not gonna give the devil credit no more. Right? We can't, the Bible said he's, Jesus saw him fall like lightning. So if he fell like lightning, then don't give him his wings back. Don't give him strength by saying how bad the devil's treating you, how bad he's beating you up. You're giving him his power back. He said he's lifting your head up. He's saying don't walk around with your head hung down. Right? Amen? Right? We said it before. It's, it's, it's hard to wear a crown with your head down. Right? You got to keep your head up. In order for you to see where you're going and the direction he's going to take you to, you got to keep your head up. Yes? That's, thank you, God. Not only does he keep in your head up, but also you got to remember who's around you watching you. You might have a little son or a little daughter that's watching you with your head down or watching how you handle things because how you handle things is inevitably how they're going to handle things. If you fussing and slamming doors and yelling and screaming, that's all, and that's the normal they're going to grow up in, so they're going to do the same thing. But if they see you with your head up, if they see you going through, but you're still focused, if they still, and, and know that you're dealing with something, but yet you're not allowing the enemy to sh shed another tear out of you, but to, you know you realize that you cried enough about this thing, and I got to keep my head up, right? Keeping my head up means I'm keeping my head above water so that I don't drown. So I'm not smothered. I'm not suffocated. I'm keeping my head up. I'm, I'm focused on what's in front of me. I'm no longer. Do, I'm no longer in that state that sometimes I put myself by saying I'm not going to get out of this. But I'm keeping my head up. It means I'm. I'm remaining optimistic. I'm looking towards the hills. I'm focusing on on something that's coming, rather. And when he says I'm looking towards the hills with which cometh my help, in the process he's moving towards those hills means he's got momentum means he's headed in that direction, and so he's got an anticipation that where he's headed now is going to be a good place because he's leaving where he previously was before, and he's headed towards his help, right? Thank you, God. means he's left some stuff behind. He's left some people behind. He's left some old ideas behind, some old ideology behind, maybe even some old theology left behind. Now he's focusing on God. He's looking towards the hills. He's not looking towards the man. He's not looking towards the White House. He's not looking towards the governor's mansion. He's looking towards the hills. He's looking towards heaven. Heaven has all his answers. Amen? Thank you, God. I will, I, I, everybody said, I will. It means it's a decision. I've decided. I decided other stuff that didn't work. I put all my energy in other stuff that didn't get me nowhere. But insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. If you want something different, you got to do something different. He said, I will. This is what I've decided to do. And, th and, and, when you, and when you decide to do something and take ownership of that, then you also have an accountability and effort to know that since I've decided to do this, I'm going to put my effort to make sure it gets done right. 
I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. That's anticipation. I know he, everybody say, I know he coming. I know he coming. The reason why he said I'm looking towards the hills from which cometh my help means that help came from the hills before. You're not going to look in a direction that didn't help you before. He's looking at that direction because he got direction from the help before. So he's saying, now I'm looking towards the hills from which cometh my help. I know where my help comes from. It's coming from the Lord. He's helped me before. He's going to help me again. He helped me last month, going to help me this month. Help me make it through winter, going to help me make it through summer. Right? You know, electricity spiked in winter because of, the, because of the cold weather. It spikes in the summer because of AC. He helped me in winter. He going to help me in the summer. He also sometimes going to give me a cool breeze, and I'll turn the heat off or turn the AC off and open the windows up. Either way, he going to help me out. I'm not in this by myself. Yes, I did stuff by myself. It didn't get me nowhere. Now I realize I'm no longer by myself, right? I got help with me. He is my help. And six times, six times in this passage, it says help. That word for help and preserve are the same, uh, same original word. So when he's saying help and preserve, they're the same thing. He's going to preserve me. He's going to keep me. Yeah, I know where my help comes from. I know who's going to preserve me and keep me above water. Yes, I know he's going to keep my mind together, my money together, my family together. He's going to keep me sane. Yes? I will lift up my eyes from... Uh, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, my help. See, he said, first he says, I will, and now he's identified in two that it's my help comes from the Lord. He said, I don't know where y'all get your help from, but my help comes from the Lord. Yes? If, if I got to do this by myself, me and Jesus, then that's where it's going to be. But my help comes from the Lord. Now, other people might say that other people might have helped them along the way, and they might have. But inevitably, the real source comes from the Lord. He says, my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Thank you, God. Because there were other gods at that time also people would mention. But they don't have the same credit as the maker of heaven and earth. That's got to be the Lord. Yes? That's got to be Jehovah. That's got to be Jesus. It's, it's what he's saying, that's where my help comes from, who created everything. And if he created everything, he's got an answer for everything. There's not a problem he can't solve. There's not an issue he doesn't already know about. Yes? So when he says, my help comes from the Lord, because you can get, you can get help from different sources. And potentially you can, and they will be beneficial. But sometimes those things dry up. And so then you got to realize what, what does not dry up. Grace does not dry up. Mercy don't dry up. Righteousness don't dry up, right? When you tap into him, it's going to continue to flow in every season, in every hour, in any moment in time. He's always ready to receive and always ready to offer you love and acceptance for whatever's going through. My help comes from the Lord. I, that's, and, see, and that's what you also got to tell your children. Again, when we say when your children are watching you, you got to let your children know so they can, so he will also be their help. Yes? My help comes from the Lord, but also your help when the time comes is going to come from the Lord too. The way I talk to the Lord, also you can talk to the Lord. My mother talked to the Lord. Your auntie talked to the Lord. Father, somebody in your family was praying before you did. And the Bible said also when it came to Timothy, he said it was your grandmother and your mother had it, but I'm also convinced it's in your life too. And so you got to pass this Jesus on to other people as well. Your son and your daughter ought to know how to live, how to know how to pray, how to choose a mate, how to, how to fast. You got to teach your children those things. Behold, he said, he said I, he, thank you God, he, he, my help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. That's where my source is. Yes? When other stuff don't work, he still works. Right? He's still on the throne. Still in control. Right? He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. That means he's going to establish you. Jude says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. That means he's going to keep you together. He's going to keep you upright. Establish you means that you won't fall into stuff like you used to fall into stuff. Won't fall into situations, won't fall into issues like you used to fall into issues. But now he's keeping you together and he's establishing you. 
He's making sure he's invested in your longevity. He's making sure that you stay upright and mobile. He's making sure that the devil doesn't see you as a feast, but he sees you as an adversary. He sees that you, he, when the enemy sees you, he shouldn't see you as a pushover. The Bible says in Ephesians that, he's, that he said that he, your loins are going to be girded about with truth. He says now, having done all to stand. Well, you can't stand if you're flimsy. You can't stand if you're easily going to be toppled over. The Bible also says when Jesus talks about a wise man, a wise man is going to build his house on a rock. But, if a, but a foolish man is going to build his house on the sand. That means he's going to establish you when the storm comes. Didn't we just have a storm come through? Didn't take your house away, didn't knock you off the road, kept you together, right? Kept your lights on, your power on, everything's still good. We don't get overwhelmed by storms. We just know how, we know how to handle storms now. So when he says he's going to establish you and keep you, he said he's not going to allow your foot to be moved. You're not going to be tripped up in the stuff. The devil's not going to put stumbling blocks in your way. They're going to be stepping stones for you because you can identify what the devil's doing. We're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Oh, I know what you're up to. I know that you put that in my way to try and knock me out of the way, to try and stop me from praying or to try to stop me from giving or to try and stop me from visiting. You put this little obstacle in my way, but now I realize it's you. And because I realize it's you, I'm going to step on top of. I'm going to use what the enemy meant for bad, for my good. I'm going to see the benefit of it. In verse 3, he says, he will not suffer your foot to be moved. You won't slip. You won't fall. You won't stumble. Yes, and don't play games with yourself and, and start worrying about what might happen or how bad it's going to get or it's not going to work out. Don't be thinking about that. Think about how good it's going to be. Think, think about how, how, how blessed it's going to be. Think about how, how he's going to pour out and how he's going to continue to pour out and that you don't have to worry about getting two steps forward and one step back. Those seasons are over. We're not living in those cycles no more where I was, had a good season and all of a sudden I had a bad season. We're not living like that no more. We go from glory to glory and faith to faith. He's taking us to higher places, deeper depths, but also higher heights. He's moving us forward. He said he will not suffer your foot to be moved. That he's establishing you. He's keeping you together. But he's also making sure that you keep your standard. He's not, not suffering your foot to be moved. It's also a picture of you standing on something and remaining there. I'm not giving an inch about this. In verse 1 it says, I will. So his mind is made up and I will. But now in verse 3 he's saying he's not going to suffer your foot to be moved. Because you voiced it out that you're, not gonna, that you're for Jesus now and you're going to follow him. But now the Lord is saying in verse 3, I'm going to make sure you stand. You said that you're going to stand, so I will make sure you stand. Yes? Thank you, God. Because you made a decision, God also made a decision too. Verse 1 it said I, that I will. And verse 3, the Lord said, I will too then. I will make sure that you stay upright. I will make sure that you won't be a, a meal for the enemy. Yes? I will make sure, thank you, God, that when things are falling, are falling apart around you, you won't fall apart. Amen? That he's going to keep you together. Yes? Oh, no, look, we don't always, we, we all had tough moments where, and quiet moments where we, done, we just been in, in a room crying or sobbing and everything else, and that's cool for a while. You can get all that out for a while, but after a while, you got to come out of the room and then realize that my crying days are over. The tears that I'm flowing now are tears of joy, not tears of sorrow. He's making me better. These situations have made me better. These situations, I faith, have made me smarter, have made me wiser. I realize some stuff now, having gone through some stuff. Yes? I grew from that. I got a Ph.D. from the storm I went through. Yes? Amen? He said, Behold, verse 4, He that keepeth Israel shall never slumber or sleep. means that the Lord is always going to be watching you. He is always on the job. There is not a moment when you are not on his mind. That's how important you are to him, that you are always on the mind of God. And see, sometimes we try to figure out if people are really thinking about us the way we think about them. But the Lord is already saying in the word, regardless how you feel about me, I feel about you, that I love you, and I will not sleep on you. You know, Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told his disciples, don't go to sleep. 
He said, can you stay awake and just watch for a couple of hours while I do this thing, while I'm trying to talk to the Lord? I know the devil's coming, but can you stay awake? And the Bible said he went back and forth for them several times. Each time they were snoring by a tree. Amen. It's, it, it, and do you know in the end, in the end, Jesus said, sleep on. Yes. And see, that's what you also got to then tell people that slept on you. Sleep on then. Because you didn't think I was going to get out of this, did you? You didn't think I was going to be able to live without you, did you? You didn't think I'd... See, just go, go to sleep then because they just let them sleep. Just keep going and doing what you need to do and focus on what God has called you to do because he that keeps Israel will never sleep or slumber. Always on the clock. Always on the defense for you. Always interceding for you. What he said, and we just went the other day in Romans chapter 8, that he's always making intercession for us. Praying for us, standing in the gap for us. And because we got all that help, you might as well keep walking then. You might as well keep going then. You already put this effort into it. Don't try and talk yourself out of going forward when God has already put it in your spirit to go forward. Oh, you can trim the tree a little bit and you can thin things out a little bit, but it should not stop your momentum though. You should continue to go forward because there's no, there's no growth in standing still. Behold, everybody say behold. behold. Means he, that all of a sudden he, he's identifying it. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I, 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 I set before you an open door. That word behold refers to that what was, uh, was covered up is now uncovered. Right? He that keepeth Israel, the same one who made the mountain, the same one that was that's never, that's never sleeping. He that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. And they're not the same word. He's saying he's not going to lose focus of you. He's not going to lose focus of your situation. But he's also surely not going to sleep. Right? Not when you need help. Right? Sometimes when something goes on in the middle of the night, sometimes you would have to wake somebody up. Right? What's that, what's, what's that that we hear in the kitchen? And you want to wake somebody up. Yes? But the Lord's already up. Already knows what's in the kitchen. Yes? And ready to bump back at whatever bumps in the night. He's, he's already there to let you know that you can go to sleep. There's, there's no reason for you walking the floor and worried about what's going to happen and how you're going to pay these bills and how you're going to get it together, how you're going to get the insurance that you need, how you're going to get braces for your child. Ain't no sense in you walking the floor trying to figure that out when the Bible said God already worked it out. He's already worked it out. He already said in verse 1, he's my help. And since he's your help, go to bed then if he's your help. Somebody, if he's going to be up all night, one of y'all ought to go to sleep. Yes, he said that he that keeps Israel never sleeps or slumbers. He is on the job. And because he's on the job, I don't have to be on the job. I can rest. Everybody say rest. I can rest knowing that it's going to be taken care of, that even while I'm sleeping, somebody's awake fighting for me. Yes, you, you, you better not come in the room in the middle of the night if I'm asleep and he's in the room because you don't have to just deal with me. You got to deal with him. Yes? He that keeps Israel. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall never sleep, slumber or sleep. This is, this is, this is twofold. It's individually that, that he that keeps Israel would never slumber or sleep. He's referring to us individually. But he's also speaking about Israel, the place. You better not come against Israel. It's the apple of his eye. Jesus thought it was so important that out of all the universes in the world, he would come down here and walk on that street. And because that's how important Israel is to him. Yes? And we as a nation, we as a nation also got to pray for leaders to make sure that our leaders make sure that we stay aligned with Israel. He said in the Bible, I will bless them that bless you. We're blessed as long as we remain connected to them. Yes? Whatever flows in Israel also flows in us. Yes? Thank you, God. So when you, th when you think about Israel being the size of New Jersey, smaller than New Jersey, but at the same time can't be taken out by none of them, surrounded by all these other places on the outside of Israel, all of them want to take Israel out, but none, none of them have the same power to take them out. How are you smaller than everybody else but bigger than everybody else at the same time? It's because the Lord is on them. Yes? He that keeps Israel never sleeps, never slumbers. 
the Lord is thy keeper. You, you, do you see how many times he keeps saying that keeper and preserve and keeper and preserve and keeper and preserve? Because he wants it, he wants it nailed in. Repetition also breathes, and so he's saying it over and over again. Behold, he that keeps Israel never sleeps or slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. He's now identified as the keeper. He's not just keeping me, but he's also the keeper. Yes? The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. What are you going to say? What do you, what do you mean by the shade upon your right hand? It's because they're in the Middle East. They're in the Middle East. They don't have AC like we have AC, right? They can't just catch a flight somewhere like we can catch a flight somewhere. They would oftentimes have to walk, or they would have animals that they were to travel in. And so they're underneath a Middle Eastern sun. And he said, I'll be shade for you. But he's also showing us that's a call back to Exodus, that when they left out of Exodus, he was a cloud by day and fire by night. He was giving them shade when they walked out of Egypt, but he was also keeping them warm in the middle of the night. But also the Bible said when Pharaoh tried to get close to them, the Bible said that that, fr that flame got behind them and became a wall for them to make sure that Pharaoh could not touch them. Please say amen to me. That's your daddy that we're talking about. That's the one who's got you. That's the one who's taking care of you that he can call down fire from heaven. That's the one who's watching over you while you're tossing and turning and while you're trying to figure out how things are going to work out, how you're trying to find more hours in 24 hours. He's still the one that's taking care of you. The Lord is thy keeper. He's switching it up there also as well. He, verse 2, he's mine. Uh, verse 5, he's yours. He's all of ours. It was personal before, but he also, the same help that I got, or the same help that I'm getting, you can get too. He's thy helper. He's your helper too. You can get the same thing I got if you do the same thing I did. Yes? If you just talk to him and pray and, just, and intercede and do what he, he's, right? He's no respecter of person, but he is a respecter of principle, right? Anybody can get it because we've blessed us all for God so loved the world, everybody in it. Anybody can go to heaven if they want to, but you still got to punch your ticket. Yes? He said, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. That word for shade also is a picture of protection and defense. Protection and defense. He's going to protect you from seen and unseen dangers. Yes? Unseen dangers. That means he's going to protect you from anything uh, natural and demonic, right? Amen? Things that you can see and things that you can't see. Because even now, going to the store could be dangerous. Aren't you glad we country mouses? We're, not, we're referring to that as just because we're not living in the city, right? There's a whole lot that's happening in the city right now where it's not safe to walk down the street. And when the Bible says he go, he's protecting you and he's your defense, your shade upon your right hand, it means that he's going to cover you as you go. He's going to protect you and be your defense, yes, from the elements outside, but also from principalities and powers, things that we cannot see. He's going to protect you, not only you, but everything pertaining to you, yes. He's going to protect your children, your grandchildren, yes. You, don't, you haven't even met your great-grandchild yet, but he's already promised to take care of them too, amen. Thank you, God. The Lord is thy keeper, and the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. He is your protection and your defense. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Again, that's a picture of Exodus in verse 6. Because we saw when he walked out during the daytime, the cloud was a picture of God being with them when they went out. And fire being with them at nighttime to keep them warm, but also to protect them. The sun shall not smite thee by day. Whatever journey you're taking, whatever direction you head to, I will make sure I will cover you as you go. While you're going to school, while you're going to work, when you're going to see your auntie, going to pick up some ice cream, wherever you're headed to, I'll be protecting you as you go. That a stray bullet won't hit your car. And that a nail won't hit your tire on 29. That if there's a drunk driver on the road, the Lord's going to make sure that angels protect you so that they won't come into your lane. He, 
The sun shall not smite thee by day or the moon by night. He said, whatever's happening in the morning, whatever's happening in the evening, whatever the enemy tries to come against you is also in Psalm 91. He will protect you from the terror that wastes at noonday. He said, whatever the enemy tries to come against you, I'm there. Any hour of the day, I got you. Every hour of the day, every moment, the things that you can't see. Yes? Thank you. How many, thank you, God. How many times have you fussed about, how many times have you fussed about not being able to leave at the right time and then have to go down the road 10 minutes later and realize that you just missed an accident? How many, that's happened, that's happened to too many people too often to realize that God was, even in, even when you were upset about not getting on time, God was still on time. He was protecting you from stuff that you did not see, did not know. You know, we got back on this, these roads back here, and we've been seeing deers every day. But they ain't jumping out in front of you, keeping you safe. The hand of the Lord is making sure that you're good, making sure that you're taken care of. He said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Thank you, God. This is also a picture of people being afraid of what's going to happen the next day. What if? God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us love, power, and a sound mind. So we're not supposed to be afraid of what if. When he said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. People will dread Monday. They'll dread Monday. But, but God made Monday. Thank God you woke up to see a Monday. Is anybody hear what I'm saying to you? When he's talking about this, the, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night, that sometimes the day brings different challenges. But the Lord is with you during those different challenges. Yes? Whatever you have to face, because sometimes during the day you might be at work, Sometimes during the day you might be traveling, but whatever obstacles or, or things come in your way, the Lord said, I'm with you to make sure to keep you and to preserve you. Yes, to keep you and to preserve you. Thank you, God. We were leaving. It's been, it's been a few years now. We were leaving to go to the beach. We were leaving to go to the beach. Car piled up. We, were, we got on 64. And we had not gone anywhere on 64, and it was just a little bit of rain, and we hydroplaned, and then went off the road, and went up in the bank, and it came back down, right? Messed the car up, but didn't mess none of us up. Yes? People behind us said, we saw your car lift up off the ground, and then move off to the side of the road. And then somebody from Roanoke pulled over when it was still raining, and had an empty truck, and they said, look, we got blankets in the back to make sure y'all warm. Are y'all Okay. Said, and, and said on the way to Roanoke, she said, can, there was a couple on the way from Roanoke, said, can we pray for y'all? Oh, you're speaking my language then. Because God will send you what you need when you need it. Yes? Yes? We thought we were headed to the beach, but then our plans changed, wrecked the car, whatever else, and then, and then, we, we, then we met two prayer partners that we never met before, right? And then we just detoured and went somewhere else. The Lord is with us. He will preserve us. Amen? Amen? Thank you, God. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. This is also a picture sometimes when they would use, uh, when they would speak about somebody going through mentally, they would call them a lunatic based on the lunar cycle, right? So when you talk about the sun or, or, the, or the moon or sometimes people change, go from hot to cold, and the Lord said, I'll, I'll protect you. Yes? He said, this is, this is before there's a physician's reference. The Lord has already said he's the great physician. He said, I'll make sure I'll take care of you. 39, 39 lashes on his back for 39 categories of diseases. He's already taking care of your healing. Whatever you're dealing with, however long you've been dealing with, he's got a stripe for that. Wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. Oh, don't diminish what he did for us. And with his stripes we are healed. That Whatever you're dealing with, he can heal you of that. He can heal you of anything physical, but also he can heal you of anything mental. Whatever you've been wrestling with, whatever you've been dealing with, whatever's been bothering you, if there's been an ache or pain, or whether it's been a heartache or heart pain, or a mind problem, whatever it is, God said, I got a stripe for that. I took something for that. 
So whatever is, whatever is ailing you, he said, I got you. In the daytime, in the nighttime. Yes? Because sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. And you just got on your mind which, all the stuff that you need to do and get accomplished. And then you just up. But the Lord has said, I'm up with you though. And, up, and better, not only am I up with you, I'm going to help you accomplish what you're thinking about accomplishing. I'm going to help you get to where you want to go. I'm going to help you accomplish and, and, and break the tape and get across with the ribbon and make sure you win the race. Amen? The Lord's got a lot invested in you. Thank you, Lord. He's got a lot invested in you. The Lord shall preserve thee. Again, that's the word preserve again. Preserve and keep, preserve and keep. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. He's going to keep your mind together. Thank you, God. More than anything. See, more than anything, you want to keep your mind together. Thank you, God. You've already had times when your money was low. God will give you your money back. That ain't an issue. But you want your mind together. I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul would prosper, as your mind. But your mind's got to be together. Keep my soul together. Thank you, God. He's going to preserve your soul. Psalm 23 said he's going to, he, he preserves, he keeps your soul. He redeem you. He'll, he'll restore your soul. Make sure that you're good. Amen? The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, whatever form, whatever form of evil, however it comes against you or your household, he's going to protect you from it. Amen? He's going to protect. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. He's going to keep you together. Thank you, God. He's going to keep. And, 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 and even in this times when you, when you he's he going to keep you, he's going to keep you up. Yes? Because you have, you have to be strong for other people. And it's good. I don't want to, I don't want to be strong again. I've been strong all the time. I've been strong all the time, keeping it together all the time. You know, why can't I cry a little bit? Why can't I have my moment? But the Lord has said, I'm going to preserve your soul. I'm going to keep you together. Amen? Even when those difficult moments, I'm going to keep your mind together, keep your mind intact. I know you're worried, but then he gives you a scripture. Don't be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But do all things through prayer and supplication. Make your request be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding going to guard your heart and your mind. He's going to keep you together. He's invested in you. He's staying. Thank you, God. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from the time forth, from this time forth, even forevermore. He said, the Lord shall preserve you going out and coming in. He's talking about coming into the world, but also leaving the world. But he's also talking about when you leave your house to the time you get back into your house, I'm going to cover you and preserve you. From this time forth, even forevermore. He's saying that he, thank you, God. Here's what we also got to keep in mind. Whenever he puts scriptures out there like that, you also then got to remind him of what he said. Lord, you said. We just, we just went through it the other week when we talked about Deuteronomy 28, that I was going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, going in and coming out. Lord, you said that. And because you said that, i got to remind you, Lord, you said that. And so there's times when you're going through it as well, and when time that you're feeling alone, Lord, you said, you're going to protect me. Lord, these people are acting crazy with me at work. It seems like I'm, I'm, I'm being circled at work. I'm being pointed out at work. I'm being persecuted at work. Lord, you said. You were going to preserve me and keep me. You, you said you were not going to allow anybody to walk over me. Lord, these people are taking credit for my work. Lord, I'm not getting acknowledged for the work that I've done. Oh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed beg for bread. Lord, you said that. I didn't say that. Lord, you said I would never struggle. You said I would never suffer. You said I would never lack any good thing. Thank you, God. You said every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, you said it. See, you, and when you bring those things back to his remembrance, he's also then saying, oh, you remember what I said? You remember what I told you? Then I'm going to be what I told you I was going to be. Then I'll do what I said I was going to do because God has not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall also reap. He's not going to let anybody talk about your God that he did not come through. Yes? Thank you, God. You got too much evidence in your life. 
thank you, God. I wish somebody would say, why are you, why are you walking with Jesus? I can tell you why I'm walking with Jesus. I can, I can show you why I'm walking with him. I can show you where I was, and I can show you where I am at this present moment. Because now that I'm walking with him, it's the best I've been. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The Lord going to preserve you. He's going to keep you. And I'm going to remind him what he said. I'm just reminding God what he said because he wants to be reminded. He hasn't forgot, but he wants to be reminded. Lord, and I'm going to bring all things to his remembrance. Amen? Lord, you said that you're going to take care of me and my household. Me and my household shall be saved. Yes? You said my children are going to be blessed. Thank you, God. You said that favor would come upon me as soon as I got married. Thank you, God. So thank you, Lord. I'm reminding him what he said. Thank you, God. And then the text said, he said, I was going to preserve you from now and forevermore. So when you find yourself feeling like that you, uh, things aren't lining up, you go back to Psalm 121 and say, Lord, you said you got me. You said you got me from now until forevermore. It means that you're going to keep me until we, re until we meet in glory. He's got me. Thank I'm not, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The devil wants to always try to tell you that you got to do it. And the devil wants to try and tell you that you're by yourself. He wants to play games with your mind and whatever. Ain't nobody helping you. Nobody looking out for you. No, 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 no. That ain't what the Bible say. The Bible say he with me. Thank you, God. He even takes a step further and Jesus said that the spirit that was before was on the outside is now going to be on the inside. I'm never alone. Never alone, never by myself, even though physically at the moment I might be by myself. Nope, no other human individual is there. God is still there. He's going to preserve you. He's going to keep you. Thank you, Lord. He's going to make sure that you're going to thank you, God. He's going to make sure that you're not homeless. He's going to make sure that all your bills are taken care of. He's going to make sure you got a place to lay your head. Go make sure that there's food to eat and food on your table. Amen? Thank you, God. Go have, make sure that you got enough room so one of your cousins come over and want to crash. Because they will. Amen? Thank you, God. He said, I'm going to make sure that you're provided for and taken care of. Thank you, God. So when things are started hitting the earth or hitting the world, all of a sudden, how you got it together? God keeping me together. Thank you, God. How are things working out for you? It's because God's been working things out for me. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We work at the same place, but we, we don't have the same God, though. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We might even went to the same school, got the same degree, but we don't have the same God, though. Amen? Thank you, God. So you got favor that's on you. Thank you, God. That means some things you won't have to walk through. And I, look, and I understand also as well that he teaches us when we walk through stuff, but favor also shows us that there's certain things that you won't have to go through that other people will go through. How else are you going to know it's favor unless you're being exempt from certain things? Thank you, God. It means it's not going to hit my house. It's not going to hit my children. Thank you, God. My testimony don't always got to be I went through. My testimony is also sometimes got to be I didn't have to go through it all. He protected me from all that stuff. He had his arms around. He preserved me. He preserved me. He kept me. Thank you, God. He kept my mind. He kept my heart. He kept my relationship. What God has put together, no man will put asunder. He kept our family intact. We had beef and we had, we had struggles, but we still tight when the cookout comes. He kept us all together. He said he's going to preserve you. Thank you, God. You don't always got to go through something and get a stripe. Sometimes the testimony is, I was exempt from that. I didn't have to go through that. It was by the grace of God. And he took me around that. Amen? Thank you, God. A detour is meant to take you from an obstacle where you didn't have to go through. And it might, sometimes detours are faster for you. Thank you, God. The detour is meant to help you, not hurt you. He said he's going to preserve you. He said that, that word preserve and keep or interchangeable, it's the same word in the original language, six times. Six is the number of man, referring to us, humanity, that our help comes from God. That there's, there's certain things we can do 
but then, then, we, then we also are in need of God, though, because we're human, that nobody's perfect, have good days and bad days. Yes? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Don't always feel churchy. Don't always feel like praying. Yes? But still loved by the Lord and still preserved and kept. Amen? Thank you, God. Let's close with this scripture in mind. I got something else just dropped in my spirit. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit seals us or preserves us until the day of redemption. We are sealed, preserved, kept until the day of redemption. Thank you, Lord. It means he's got his hand on your life. Thank you, Lord. You're not leaving here until God says you're going to leave here. Yes? He will keep you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He will keep you through everything and every situation. He will keep you. He will keep your mind. He will keep you focused. He's going to keep your tongue right. He's going to keep you speaking right. He's going to keep your heart right. Thank you, God. He's preserving us. Thank you, Lord. Esther said, for such a time as this, means that we were preserved for this season. Preserved for this year. Prever preserved for this time period that we're in. That there's something we're to accomplish in us and through us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Everybody stand to, stand to your feet if you can. Thank you, God. If you can. Thank you, God. Anybody we got to pray for, First Lady, that's online as well. Thank you, God. You're preserved. L Lucretia and her leg. Amen. Let's remember Lucretia tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Amen. Good reports for Lucretia. Good reports for Angela's dad tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Carolyn Nicholson, she's in my spirit. Carolyn Nicholson, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Shirley Gibson, Bianca Chambers, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our sister Ira, our Lord, we thank you tonight for meeting every need. Thank you for preserving us, reminding us, Father, that you got us that you're keeping us. Thank you in the name of Jesus that you're sustaining us, that you are our source. Thank you, Lord, that when resources go low, Father, that you're still our source. And I thank you, Father, that you got, you got ways of getting it to your people, whatever they're in need of, Father. You just don't have one avenue, Father. You got multiple ways, multiple streams. You got multiple opportunities, Father. You can create a, a way where there is no way. You can, the Bible says you can create rivers in the desert. So, Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus that your children are going to lack no good thing. I thank you in the name of Jesus. We are kept by you, preserved by you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And because of that, we cannot be possessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're possessed by the Holy Spirit. So we can't be possessed by any unclean spirit. So, Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus for having your hand on us and keeping us. Thank you for healing us, healing our children. Thank you for good reports from the doctor's office, God. Thank you that we believe the reports of the Lord, Father. We believe what you've promised. Lord, I thank you for watching over Carolyn and Roger Shiflett, dear Lord. Thank you for having your hand on their lives, dear Lord. Thank you for keeping them safe in the name of Jesus. But not only them, but their children and grandchildren in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now for Susie in the name of Jesus and James this evening, God. For the right family, dear Lord. We've been praying for them and the Browns, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. For the Rakers and the Tynes, God. The Davenports, the Murrays, Father. We thank you for the Thompsons, God. In the name of Jesus, dear Lord. McMillan, McDaniel, God. In the name of Jesus. For watching over Brittany and Cammie this evening, God.
We thank you right now, Father, for the Jackson family, dear Lord. We thank you this evening, dear Lord, for watching over Pastor Scott in the name of Jesus, watching over him in the name of Jesus and his household. Lord, we thank you that we're kept people, preserved, preserved for this moment, kept for this moment. Thank you for watching over Andrea this evening. Thank you for watching over her and her children. Thank you, God. For Carolyn Nicholson, I pray for her strength and her wisdom, dear Lord. And pray for her heart as well and direction, God. Order her steps, God. Thank you, God. Use her for your glory, God. Thank you for the minister that's within her, dear Lord. And thank you for an opportunity to minister. Joel and Ben for this evening, God. Thank you for our sister and keeping her safe. Keeping your hand on her life, dear Lord. Dream of this evening, God. And Sam and Ilo Bosa. And Diana. Thank you for watching over Dreamer. Thank you that she's kept. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that our children are kept. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that her peace is kept. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for every family represented in this room. Thank you for those that are with us, connected with us online, Father. We thank you for our natural family in this room, but also spiritually, the people that are connected with us that are not in this room. That whatever's flowing in us is flowing in them. And thank you for your reminder, Father, that you're keeping us. Thank you for your reminder, a pleasant reminder, Father, that things will work out. Thank you for that pleasant reminder, dear Lord, Father, that you, that you will fix whatever's broken, that you will fix whatever needs to be repaired, that you will take care of it. Lord, I thank you right now that it's not by, not by oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's not by might or by power. It's by your spirit that you're taking care of business. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. We serve a good God, amen? He's good to us and good for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being in the house this evening. I ask that you be safe on the road this evening. If you got a heavy foot, I want you to just take it easy. If you got a heavy foot this evening, uh, on the road and stuff like that, just it's, it's raining out, so just be careful as it's raining out. Um, God will take care. Of, God, He's reminding us. He's reminding us in in the words and the messages that we've been hearing and teaching that He's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us, and that we that he, that He will take care of us, and He will take care of us as we're taking care of what we need to take care of. That he has his hand on us. And so we got we to gotta have a, a confidence within us to know that we're not in this alone. That things were going to work out different for us in this season because we're doing something different. We're allowing God to move in and take up residence and do a new thing. Amen? And new things, new things equal new results. Right? So you're not going to get the same results you got before because you're doing a new thing now. A new thing now. Thank you, God. Let's receive the blessing tonight. Thank you, Lord. Invite people to church. Let people know we're in the house. Let people know we're in the house. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Eden and Israel in the United States, and I will bless them. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Thank you for coming tonight. I want you to be safe tonight. Glad you're in the house tonight.